name is John Westgate. Westgate is a quaternary tephrochronologist, in plain English, a volcano detective. Westgate can identify a volcano anywhere in the world using just one critical piece of evidence, volcanic ash. Give Westgate some volcanic ash and he'll track down the volcano that produced it. We try to find out where the ash comes from, its parent volcano. And in that framework, it's exactly like a DNA signature. Volcanic ash from every eruption is unique. It has a specific mixture of rock fragments and minerals that can point to its source. During an eruption, magma forces its way up through cracks to the surface of the Earth. If volcanic gases can escape from the magma easily, it produces a flow of lava. But if water and gases are trapped in the magma, it can explode with tremendous force, shattering solid rock and transforming magma into tiny particles of volcanic ash. There are many factors that will affect the ultimate composition of a magma, the original source rocks from which these magmas are derived, uh, vary in composition. As magmas move through the Earth's crust, they might meet other magmas and mix together to form quite different material. For decades, Westgate has successfully linked ash to specific volcanic eruptions across the world. But in 1990, Westgate ran into a problem. I start to get boxes of volcanic ash from many different people, and these uh, samples are coming from widely separated parts of the Earth's surface. And when I started to look at this material, look at the volcanic ash, I found that chemistry was very, very similar. This similar chemical composition suggested to Westgate that all the ash came from a single volcanic eruption. But ash from a typical eruption rarely falls more than a few hundred miles. Yet these identical ash samples were collected from over 4,000 miles. If a single volcano were responsible for all this ash, its eruption must have been more powerful than any in recorded history. To determine if such a monster volcano ever existed, Westgate would need more clues. He would need to know the age of the ash, which he can find using a technique called fission track dating. He starts by sifting the ash, looking for one key ingredient, volcanic glass. I sift this material to get the coarsest fraction of the uh, volcanic ash and then I would use magnetic separators to concentrate the glass from that coarsest component of the ash. This volcanic glass is formed at the time of eruption from rapidly cooling magma. Etched inside the glass are microscopic sized trails or pits. These trails are caused by the decay of radioactive uranium-238, always present in magma. By counting the number of trails and knowing the rate at which uranium-238 decays, Westgate can calculate the age of the ash and when the volcano erupted. But when Westgate completed the process, what he found shocked him. All these samples from locations thousands of miles apart were the same age. 75,000 years old. The clues were lining up. Westgate's ash samples are the same age as Greg Zielinski's evidence of sulfuric acid in the atmosphere and Mike Rampino's discovery of a catastrophic cooling of the oceans. These three scientists, working independently, are closing in on an unimaginable volcanic event. 
an eruption that could only be produced by a volcano larger than any known in history. Now, all Westgate has to do is find the volcano. We started to search for volcanoes uh, in other parts of the world uh, to see if we could find the suitable candidate. Westgate puts out the call to his colleagues to send in samples from all the volcanoes they're working on. It is the start of one of the biggest detective hunts in the history of volcanology. The first likely suspect that Westgate scrutinizes is the Lockheed volcano in Iceland. Close to where Zelinsky found evidence of sulfuric acid in Greenland's ice cores. Well, Greg found this sulfur peak in the Greenland ice core. And Lucky obviously would be a possible candidate for that, given the proximity of that volcano to, to the Greenland ice sheet. When the Lockheed volcano erupted in 1783, it spewed over 200 square miles of lava. So deep, it would have buried the island of Manhattan, more than halfway up the Empire State Building. It was one of the largest outpourings of lava in recorded history. The effects of Lockheed spread far beyond Iceland. Throughout Europe, volcanic gases killed trees and other vegetation and plunged the continent into one of the coldest winters ever recorded. Benjamin Franklin, who was then the US ambassador in Paris, wrote about the sulfur-laden haze that hung over the city. Franklin was one of the first to link volcanic eruptions and climate. But the impact of Lockheed's volcanic gases was the worst in Iceland, killing 9,000 people, a quarter of its population. Marie Edmonds has investigated how this happened. Lucky was a devastating eruption um, which killed thousands of people and this was mainly uh, through uh, famine, uh, crop failure caused by the emission of very large quantities of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. Despite the vast quantity of sulfur dioxide Lucky produced and its proximity to Zelinsky's ice cores, Westgate's tests show that the composition of the Lucky ash does not match his mystery samples. But as he continues to receive new samples, he begins to see a pattern. The closer to Southeast Asia, the higher the number of samples. This region has over 70 known volcanoes. With one so violent, it stands out from all the rest. Pinatubo, in the Philippines, has erupted seven times in the last 9,000 years, including one of the most violent eruptions of the 20th century. Three reasons why we looked at Pinatubo. One is it was located in the right area. Two, it's capable of explosive volcanic eruptions. And three, the overall composition of its volcanic ash is very similar. Pinatubo's eruption in 1991 blew a vast 15 million ton cloud of superheated ash and gas into the atmosphere. When scientists saw the speed at which this huge sulfur dioxide cloud, this aerosol cloud, um, spread around the planet, they were amazed. I don't think anybody would have imagined that um, the effects could occur so quickly after a large eruption. Hundreds of people lost their lives, and at least 50,000 were made homeless. Westgate immediately put ash from Pinatubo under the microscope.